In this video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on what I consider to be the holy grail of live performance, which is full automation. Now in the studio, I've been a user of Apple's Logic Pro for a long time. Now when MainStage first came out, I was really excited for the possibility of performing live with all the same plugins that I use in Logic. So I gigged a few times using MainStage, but I found that I was using it mostly as a glorified effects processor with lyrics, and there's nothing wrong with that per se. But in my show, I do a lot of changes, instrument switches, and transitions that require precise timing. On a few shows, I actually ended up missing a few changes because I had to constantly remember to come back to the footboard for each section. And when performing, I think it's important to give the audience a good show, and so for me, doing a pedalboard dance during the whole thing takes my attention away from the audience. Before we start the tutorial, I want to briefly explain my process. That way, you can use this as a springboard to do whatever you want to do creatively. I had several things that I wanted to accomplish. One, I wanted to automate lyrics to show up with each section of the song so that the font could be dummy-proof, meaning I could just glance at my screen and not have to look for my place in a big stack of lyrics through the whole song. Two, I wanted to automate effects. So when that distortion patch for the chorus is coming up, I don't want to have to run back to the pedal board just to step on a switch. I just wanted to change with the patch. Or even better, instead of doing a hard switch, why not make the gain setting do a smooth ramp up to the chorus to really make a dynamic build up? Three, I wanted to automate lighting. Now, I think lighting is a simple but effective way to add polish to your live show. I happen to be using Chauvet's Color Strip Minis, which are DMX controllable. I wanted to do a bit of lighting design for each song, and I also wanted the lighting to be rhythmically in sync with the show without me having to do anything. And then finally, I wanted to maintain flexibility. I didn't want the whole show to be in the same order every time, and I wanted to be able to do some improv if the mood strikes without having to worry about interrupting a long program. Uh, I'm gonna be moving kind of quick through this, but if there's any section you need to review, please definitely go back in the video and watch it again. So the first thing, rule with any computer-based setup, is save often, make backups, and test thoroughly. Um, I try to save about every 10 minutes or so if I'm doing heavy editing and main stage or logic, just to make sure. And after a full session, you know, where I make big changes, I try to make a backup in a separate location, preferably on a separate hard drive. And then of course, test the exact hardware and software setup that you'll be using live. Um, it's, it's best to not mix and match, you know, different setups between your live and your home rig. Um, I would try to test the exact hardware. Okay, so preparation. So first thing, uh, in the Finder, go to your Applications folder, all the way down to Utilities, and there's this Audio MIDI Setup. And I use it all the time, so you can drag that actually down into the dock, and you see that here, I've got it um, set up for that. When you open it up, you might only see this Audio Devices window, so go up to Window, and it'll say Show MIDI Studio, or you can do Command 2 for the keyboard shortcut and that will bring up the MIDI Studio. What you're checking for here is to make sure that all of the hardware that you're gonna be using in your live rig is present. So for me, this is my interface, uh, this is my keyboard that I use, and then this is a set of Roland V drums going into the keyboard. I've got a little Mio MIDI inter interface that I've got the FCB 1010 by Behringer. It's a MIDI foot controller uh, going into, and that's what I use. Now, the key to this whole setup is this magical little button here called the IAC driver you might see yours dimmed out. So double click it and check this little device is online box. Um, I like to rename the port so that I can find it easier later in the application. So I called it logic to main stage. And you can create as many of these ports as you like, but uh, one should be sufficient unless you're doing something really complicated. And then next, this is just an invaluable tool um, for testing. Uh, and this is called MIDI Monitor. It's by a company called Schnoise and it's open source and it is absolutely fantastic. This monitors everything going in and out that's MIDI data. Uh, so I'll move a control real quick so you can see. So there I'm moving my keyboard controller and it's showing all of the information that you need to be able to test and see where any trouble spots are. So MIDI Monitor and it's free. Give it a download, it will really help with your setup. Okay, on to main stage. So what I've done is I've opened a basic main stage t template and I uh, made a few uh, basic things for you here with uh, verse, chorus, and bridge and changed the text on each one. 
Um, personally, I don't like seeing the on-screen keyboard and all that stuff. The only things that I will put on my screen uh, in this section will maybe be buttons that change parameters with each patch that I want to remember. So I might map something to like my footboard and make it correspond with that with a text label or something like that. So for now, I'm just keeping this very um, clean and basic so that we've got a patch, uh, patch list, the title, and the lyrics that will change. Okay, so I've made these three patches and I'm gonna play as I scroll through the patches and you'll hear, so that's the first patch, there's the chorus, and there's the bridge. So each one has a different sound associated with it and I will show you why that's beneficial later. All right, now to get this prepped for logic, the first thing that you gotta do is go into preferences and make sure that this enable rewire host support is checked. And then I change hot plug behavior to automatically use device. I don't like pop-ups and alerts to constantly bug me, but that's up to you. Um, so I, uh, once you've got that checked, you can close this out and save it. What you wanna do in preparation is, uh, you'll see this little delineator here, P0, P0, P0. Well, when you come down into the patch settings and then attributes tab here, you'll see that it's a program change message of zero, and you'll notice this duplicate uh, alert message there. Um, so what I do, it, this, is, this is what you're gonna use to have logic trigger all of the automation, right? So I would turn on bank select. These can all be bank zero, but they all need to be different program change. So the first one being zero is good. Come to the second one, it'll be bank zero, and let's go ahead and change this to one, and you'll notice that duplicate notification goes away, because now it's got a unique address bank zero and bank two, uh, program change two and so now that has gone away and then the other thing that you'll need to do and you can do this a couple of different ways um, if you're still kind of getting comfortable with main stage um, come down here to the layout tab and go ahead and add a midi activity knob right there and in the settings under midi port remember the iac driver that we set up you're going to select IAC driver and you can leave it at channels 1 through 16 or if you know exactly what you want to do change the channel and what this does is it recognizes and routes all of the incoming MIDI from the IAC driver to this specific like to this specific device so you're only going to see this light up whenever something is coming over the IAC driver and that's very handy to make sure that data is getting into main stage if you're a little bit more of a power user with main stage just come on into assignments and mappings this one is a little less visually, friend, uh, visually friendly, but it's very powerful. So what you'll do is you'll say new assignment, and when it pops up here, bring up your menu, select the IAC driver, channelize however you want, and then under CC number, you can actually delineate. You can say any, or you can say specifically, I want CC 23, and you can get very, very specific. Um, I don't pass these messages through because I don't want them going anywhere accidentally that I don't know about. And I don't typically send the value out either unless you had a specific reason to do so. And then once you've got it created, notice it appears under the logic main stage bus. This one is particularly channel one and it's unmapped. So then you can make, you can put it to any action that you want inside of main stage. You can take a particular large scale action at the concert level or you can go to a patch, and this is where it really gets fun, is you can go and edit any of the parameters, such as effects, for example, effect intensity and rate, filter, and any of these things. So you can automate them from logic, which will be really powerful later. Uh, and you can set up as many of these as you want, or as few of those as you want. Um, you can do them only as they're incoming. And this is the main stage side. Moving right along to the logic side of the house, uh, we're gonna kind of mirror this. Now the way I approach logic in this particular setup when you're trying to automate main stage is I try to keep logic as kind of lightweight as possible. So I don't produce any audio out of logic or anything like that. It's only my, my sequencer and kind of timekeeper for main stage and I do everything with main stage. Um, so I'm in a new logic project here. So I'm gonna create a MIDI track and I'm gonna say an external MIDI or USB device. And for output, you go over here and you're gonna select, ah, there it is, the Logic IAC driver. And for now, we'll send it to all, but you can pick how you want it to go out. And I'll create that track. So now we've got this track that's going to be sending to the port Logic main stage, as you can see right here. And you can pick a different one if you want. Uh, sending on all channels. So what we'll do is I will go ahead and create a region. Gotta have a region to be able to send data. 
um, and I drag it out like that. And I like to use the uh, event list editor. So in, because it's very precise and you can see everything that's going on in this particular region. Uh, whereas when you double click on it and bring up the piano roll, you kind of have to um, scroll through multiple options here to try to find what it is that you're looking for. So I like the event list when I'm doing this kind of stuff. So let's change this. We're not going to input a note. We want to input a program change. So let's do this. I will put this first program change on bar two, channel one. And it's going to be bank zero and program change zero. And then two bars later, we'll do another one, channel one, bank zero, this time program change one. And as you can see, one more time, bank zero. So you want to select the bank and then select the program change number that will be happening and turn off record enable. Okay, so now. When I hit play on this, we're going to go over here, and you see that lit up as it's playing, and it changes the patch on main stage automatically. And there's the bridge patch. And you can see each time that it got a command over the IAC bus, um, it illuminated there. Wonderfully powerful. So of course, you can do it with program changes, but then you can also do it with any other message. CCs, you can do it with pitch bend, you can do anything that you can generate in logic. Notes, you can actually have logic be a player for you, where you go and perform a MIDI performance and then have it output to a main stage patch and play along with you. You can trigger uh, main stage's playback backing tracks and play along. It's a very powerful thing. Okay, in the last portion of the video, I wanted to touch briefly on lighting since I had talked about that earlier. So again, I'm using uh, Chauvet's Color Strip Minis, but you can use any DMX controllable light for this. Um, and I did want to give a shameless plug shout out to Intex DMXs. Um, and this is the uh, plugin right here. And it's also, it's a USB interface as well for DMX. So it's got a DMX out three or five pin. And then it can function, as you can see, I'm in Logic. It functions as a plugin within your DAW, which to me is just amazing. Um, the possibilities are endless. And it tempo syncs with the tempo of your project. Um, it's just fantastic. So uh, we do a couple cover songs. I've got a couple examples here. Um, so I'll set the bank here, and you can kind of see what I've done. So each one of these is a bank, and then there's a preset, and these are MIDI accessible via channel 15 and 16. So like we talked about earlier in the video, I've got now an output to DMXs. Um, no audio output, it's just sending MIDI notes. So you'll notice over here in the event list, I've got all these notes at various sections going out on channel 16 that trigger this patch list in DMXs right here, these presets. So I've got the, um, sorry, the intro versus pre-courses, and I've actually got light shows built for these. So like when I click on this, you can see I've got automated um, light actions happening in RGB, RGB mode. So this is like reds, and then blues are coming in and fading in. And so each one of these presets has its own set of settings that are automated and doing different things. So you can build your own light show and then it's set it and forget it and it'll do it automatically. Uh, so you can see what we talked about earlier. I'm driving patch changes with this track. Um, I was even driving some chords uh, from this track uh, into an instrument and then lights uh, from this track. So now I'll just show you a real quick demo of what that looks like. Um, on the main stage screen with the lighting uh, and with me playing and you'll see patch changes and that I basically hit the play button on my keyboard and everything else happens on its own. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to be showing you here is just the, the fact that I've got it all automated. So I am using the Logic project that I was just showing you. So it's got the lighting track here with the DMXs plugin. It's got the IAC bus driving the patch changes. And then I've got my main stage patch built with one of the cover songs that we do, and I'll just do a little portion of it so that you can at least see that it's one button and the lights change with the song, and watch the screen over here and you'll see the lyrics pop up and change uh, with it as well. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so got one button here to get everything started.
Today's gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now you know